Good evening, everyone. We're glad that you've joined us yet again to worship our God and King together. We want to just worship him for what he's done for us, for who he is, but that he died on the cross for us, was buried and rose again. And he's the reason we're here worshiping together. So let's sing this first song together this evening called Great Things. worship our King. Come let us bow at His feet. He has done great things. See what our Savior has done. See how His love overcomes. He has done great things. He has done great things. in all his ways and faithful in all he does. The Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call on him in truth. He fulfills the desires of those who fear him. He hears their cries and saves them. The Lord watches over all who love him 
but all the wicked he will destroy. My mouth will speak in praise of the Lord. Let every creature praise his holy name forever and ever. This is God's word. Our hearts will 
is great, amen. amen. So last week I was talking to you about a thought that God had laid on my heart um, when I was part of an online conference a few weeks ago. And tonight I want to share another thought with you that came out of that same um, three days of a conference. Um, and here's the thought for you. God did a good job when he made you. And a few weeks ago we talked about um, our identity in Christ and what it means to be a child of God. And when we are a child, when we, we become children of God, we are brought into his kingdom. And we are brought into works and things that further his kingdom, right? And God calls us to specific things. And if you're anything like me, because I've experienced this in my life, when he calls you to something, we tend to resist because we think that we're not good enough or that we're not qualified or that we're not equipped for whatever it is that God is calling us to. But how many of us have heard this saying like a hundred times where it says, God doesn't call the equipped. He equips those he calls. And there are a lot of scriptures that talk about this. And I want to read a few of them for you. Just scriptures that talk about how we have everything that we need to accomplish and fulfill God's purposes for us. Philippians 1.6 says, He who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. Or Philippians 2.13, which says, For it is God who works in you to will and to act in order to fulfill his purpose. Ephesians 2.10, For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. And Hebrews 13.20.21 20, says, Now may the God of peace who through the blood of the eternal covenant brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd in the sheep of the sheep, equip you with everything good for doing his will. And may he work in us what is pleasing to him through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. You see, God is the one who created us, like Ephesians um, chapter 2 says. We are his handiwork, and he prepared in advance for us things to do. He, he created every fiber of our being, and being the one who created us, he knows what we're capable of doing, right? And that's why he calls us to specific things, because he is the one who's going to work through us to be able to accomplish those. If you would have asked me like 10 or 12 years ago if I would have seen myself at this time being a worship leader in front of a local church, I probably would have said, no, that's not what I see myself doing. I... Um, was not confident in that, you know. When I, when God first called me to it, it sounded really exciting. I loved singing, I loved music, I loved all of that. But then I thought about the fact that I had to sing in front of people, I had to play an instrument in front of people, and I had to talk in front of people, and I was terrified. The stage fright was real. Even through college, it was real. I mean, it wasn't until I was put into a position of being a leader that I finally started feeling like God was equipping me. You know, that whole journey was just like, God, why did you call me to this? I'm not good enough for this. Why would you call me to do it? You know, and I'm reminded of Moses, the story of Moses, where God called him to free the Israelites from Egypt. And Moses was like, whoa, no, not me. Like, I am not the one that you should send. I, I can't talk in front of Pharaoh. Like, please, God, send somebody else. And he did. God chose his brother Aaron to speak for him. But God is the one who created us. He knows us better than we know ourselves. And so when we tell God, when we say we're not good enough to do whatever it is that he's called us to, it's almost like saying, God, you didn't really do a good job when you created me because I'm not capable of doing that. But Romans 9, 20 through 21 says, But who are you, a human being, to talk back to God? Shall what is formed say to the one who formed it, Why did you make me like this? Does not the potter have the right to make out of the same lump of clay some pottery for special purposes and some for common use? See, God is the potter, and we are the clay. He has formed us specifically for things he has called us to. He did a good job when he made you. We have to believe that. And so when he calls us, we have to believe that he knows what he's doing when he asks us to do it. He created us. He knows what we're capable of. We have to remember 
that even though a lot of times when God calls us, the things that he calls us to seem impossible or way too big for us. But I think that's kind of the point because it reminds us how big our God is and it helps us to rely on him to work through us. Like Philippians 2.13 said, For it is God who works in you to will and to act in order to fill his good purposes. So when we tell God, I'm not good enough, it's almost like putting him in a box and saying, God, you didn't, you didn't create me well enough to do this. You're not capable of using me. But he is. Our God is so much bigger than that. We have to let him out of that box and believe that he's created us to do the things he's calling us to do. We have a great and big God who is, he rose from the grave. I mean, if he's capable of doing that, why wouldn't he be capable of using us, you know, in, in specific and in special ways? So we have to believe that when we become children of God, he has set us free and, and called us into his kingdom and called us to further his kingdom. And he will use us because we are his children and he loves us. We are chosen by God to carry out his will and his purposes for us and to further his kingdom. So let's pray this evening. Heavenly Father, we're just so grateful to be called your children. Father, we thank you that you are a loving Father, that you have called each of us in specific ways, that you equip us for whatever it is that you call us to. Father, we're so grateful to be part of your kingdom, to be able to do good works that further your kingdom. Father, help us to have confidence in who you are, believing that you will work through us in every situation. We praise you tonight for who you are and what you've done. Thank you that your son rose from the grave. He conquered the grave and has set us free in order to do good works for your name's sake. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. We want to sing one more song with you this evening, just declaring truth about who we are in Christ and believing that we are chosen by him.
evening that you are a child of God and that he has called you to do good works for his name's sake and that he will give you everything you need to fulfill his will and purposes for you. Have a great week.